and service hubs. Um, and the content hubs are really easy to understand. They are very large institutions that donate their content directly to the DPLA. So these were the um, six of a uh, uh, couple dozen that we have right now. Big institutions like the Smithsonian that's given uh, 800,000 items. New York Public Library is given 1.2 million items that they have scanned in. Um, we have some that you may not have heard of, Art Store, which is um, uh, known mostly in universities as having digitized art content from 120 museums across the world. Um, they've made uh, part of their collection uh, available to the DPLA, um, uh, where their, their museum partners have said, yeah, it's okay with us to donate uh, your material to Dan. Um, and we have, um, again, uh, more, more hidden institutions like Hati Trust, which is a repository, a digital repository of mostly at this point scanned books from several dozen um, libraries, mostly university libraries across the country. Um, a lot of that content is actually the content that was scanned by Google. It goes into Hati Trust, which is a preservation and access repository, and then we're able to pull out of that about 1.5 million um, titles, which represent about 3.5 million volumes of books that we have in our collection. So content hubs are easy to understand, but I think um, part of what I emphasize about the DPLA is that this thing, the service hubs, is actually more important in a way because it really gets at our model. And our model really is one that's very much like the web. It is, it is a distributed, very webby model where DPLA headquarters itself is very small. Um, we run some, some technical stuff, um, but we rely on nodes across the United States um, to link to us um, and to then go out into their states or region to find material to add into the collection. You can think about it like a spider web. We go out across the country with our service hubs to digitize and bring online um, unusual and rare material. So um, these hubs include, in fact, here in Texas, the Portal to Texas History, which is run by the University of North Texas. Um, we have a couple dozen other uh, collections, um, mostly state-based collections in Georgia, uh, Minnesota, Massachusetts, Digital Commonwealth, Kentucky Digital Library, we also have um, South Carolina, um, and um, uh, several other states, uh, New York, um, Montana, and others that have come online. Um, and again, what these places do, um, in the case of Digital Commonwealth, which is co-housed with us at the Boston Public Library, um, they are literally, in many cases, going out Digital Commonwealth does it in a zip car, they get a rental car, and they'll go out to a public library that has a local history collection one day, and they'll scan the material there, bring it back to Boston, scan it in, um, add descriptive information about those items, and upload it into DPLA. So what's really critical about this model is DPLA headquarters itself can't have, can't go out across the country um, in a Winnebago doing this all ourselves. We really do rely on um, state-based or regional-based institutions like these um, service hubs to really help us bring all of America along. Um, not just the big places, not just the Harvards and the Smithsonian's, but really the small places like Red Wing, Minnesota, which has donated 200 photographs in the 19th century through the Minnesota Digital Library, which is run in part by the University of Minnesota. So the Portal to Texas History has um, given us um, a few hundred thousand records a lot of material from Texas, but I think rather interestingly, it also includes material from all across the United States. And um, I'll show you a map in just a second, but we are not fully national. We do not have hubs in all states, but the hubs that we do have, in fact, do have content that originates from every state in the Union. So we do have, at this point, content from all 50 states. It's just that it's donated from various points across the U.S. The water metaphor I like to use in our model is we're going from the small ponds, the Red Wing Minnesotas, um, to the lakes, to the state and regional service hubs, up to the ocean that is the DPLA. And we run the overall national infrastructure um, to serve these things up in perpetuity to everyone globally. So we are just one and a half years old. Um, I'm hoping we're not entering our terrible twos. Um, <laughs> We're still rather young, and we're just getting started, but we've had amazing growth. We launched on April 18th, 2013, the anniversary of Paul Revere's ride, um, with six service hubs, six states, and 500 contributing institutions that those 
various service hubs represented small and medium sized institutions that they were able to bring online. And as of um, 1.36 p.m. Central Time, um, we are at a little bit over 8 million items. We've more than tripled in 18 months. Um, and we've added another six service hubs and we're well over 1,000. We've almost tripled the number of contributing institutions from across the U.S. So we've really made um, great progress. Um, we have a long